bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america Here on The Mark White Show, we're finding ways to make a difference, and we're looking for opportunities to make an impact on our communities. Whether in Alabama, across the country, or around the world, we can all make a difference. And it starts by taking that first step. Don't just throw a tailgate. Own the tailgate with a Bojangles Big Bow Box. Because only Bojangles puts tailgate-ready fresh, never frozen, honey barbecue or buffalo bone-in wings with fall-off-the-bone juiciness right in the pocket. The only way to make these wings any better? With some made-from-scratch buttery biscuits, flavorful fixins, and freshly steeped legendary iced tea. So let the quarterback do the throwing, you do the winning. Because how can you expect to win the game if you don't win the tailgate? Bojangles, it's bow time. With a house surrounded by pine trees planted in 1961, April and I knew it was time to do something about it. So we called James Paul. With over 25 years in the business, James Paul Tree Service offers their knowledge and experience, along with honesty and dependability, which gives you peace of mind when it comes to tree removal, tree cleanup, and clearing. Give James Paul a call at 256-777-0711. Before they fall, give James Paul a call. For those of us who are directly responsible for the care of loved ones, we want to do the very best we can to take care of them. This is where estate planning is so important. With estate planning, you can still take care of your loved ones even when you're gone. I encourage you to make a plan by going to BamaEstatePlanning.com. Harlan Mitchell has all the tools you need to make a solid plan for your family just like I did. That's BamaEstatePlanning.com. Make a plan and do it today. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. Boutique Air in Muscle Shoals, Alabama offers direct flights to Atlanta and Pensacola. Boutique Air service runs twice daily, seven days a week with fares starting at $59. Follow Boutique Air Muscle Shoals on Facebook at Boutique Air MSL and book your flight through BoutiqueAir.com. Boutique Air. Where you can fly private for the cost of commercial. Hey everybody, this is Daryl Worley, and you're listening to The Mark White Show. Hey, step up and make a difference like he does. This whole world is full of hurt and pain. A little sunshine and a whole lot of rain. It don't take much to drive those clouds away. Let's all do something good today. You never know what someone's going through Don't underestimate what you can do A friendly smile's a tiny price to pay Let's all do something good today Welcome to another edition of the Mark White Show. I'm glad that you could be with us today as we talk about a very special book called I Love You More Than Me. Now, I want to take you back to last week when I had Stephanie Langford on the show with Ronald McDonald House Charities of Alabama, and we were talking about their special event that's coming up. But during the conversation, she mentioned her son, Zach, who had Down syndrome. Now, that conversation led me to a little something extra ice cream truck 
with Hunter Norwood, and the conversation has just developed. And I appreciate the fact that right now I can have Clayton Martin from Birmingham, Alabama, to share about this new book, I Love You More Than Me. It's between two children, and this book was motivated by the relationship that his daughter Nora and her friend Levi have. Welcome to the Mark White Show, Clayton Martin. Thank you, man. It's, it's an honor to be a part of the show. Thank you so much. This is great. As you shared with me, Levi's parents were very appreciative of your thoughtfulness, your kindness when it came to developing this book, which included, as I mentioned, your daughter, Nora. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and to be honest, it all started uh, from literally a physical dream. Uh, I woke up one day uh, about a year ago and I looked over at my wife and I told her that I had had a dream that I wrote a kid's book uh, about the friendship between Levi and Nora. And uh, I, I don't know if you've ever had a dream like that, but it was kind of one of those things where you like think about it for a couple of weeks and uh, then it's like, man, this might be a real thing uh, and, and sat down and, and started to write and just kind of started flowing out. And the title came to me, the words came to me. And uh, one of the first people I reached out to was Levi's mom uh, to, to read about the story and read the story. And uh, it just kind of unfolded from there. Now tell me this, how, as Levi's father described, you actually wrote the story from Levi's perspective with typical thoughts, words, and emotions, much like our own. How were you able to get into it from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, and, you know, p part of the, the heart behind the story um, really is the perspective of, of someone with special needs. Um, you know, I grew up, um, one of my best friends growing up was someone with special needs. And, and so uh, really had an impact on my life, just the friendship that we had. Um, and so was really able to understand uh, kind of their perspective and, and how they see the world, how they see life. And so uh, wanted to write a story uh, really from their perspective to show uh, man, that people with special needs are, are just people like us. And, um, you know, they might look a little different or might walk or talk a little different, but, but they're humans just like us. And uh, really wanted to share the impact of the story from the perspective of, of someone uh, who's made such an impact on my life. He was born with both 9P deletion and trisomy 21 syndrome. Right. I've actually had several shows on trisomy before, different varieties of it, if you will. And yeah. the doctors, the medical team, they didn't know what to expect for his quality of life. But it sounds to yeah. me like with the relationship that he has with your daughter, Nora, he has a pretty good quality of life at this point. Oh, man. Levi is. He's the life of the party, man. He's, it, <laughs> it is a, uh, Levi is a walking miracle. And, um, anytime, anytime you see him, uh, he just started walking a little less than a year ago. So it's a cool story. When I originally wrote the story, uh, he wasn't walking at the time. Um, and I wrote the story as if he was walking. Uh, so it was just a really cool thing to see how that come into to life, uh, from the story and also just in real life. Uh, but anytime you see Levi, he's got the biggest smile on his face and, uh, you know, his hugs are literally like the best thing in the world. He, he gives you just a big hug around the neck and he's literally known for his hugs where, where we live. We live in Springville. It's a small town outside of Birmingham. Uh, but Levi is known in the community for his hugs and his smile. Uh, and I'm telling you, the quality of life that he has is, is honestly a lot better than some of us. This is the very first book that you have written I know you mentioned your dream, but is this something that you had thought about before to be an author, to be a writer? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, I've enjoyed writing, uh, my whole life. Obviously I've been, uh, learned how to write over the years and, uh, never dreamed to be uh, a published author. Honestly, I uh, didn't know if that was ever going to be a thing, but, uh, when I had this dream and I talked to my wife and kind of sat down to write it and it all just kind of flowed out, it was, uh, it was awesome. So I, I definitely, I'm a visionary kind of person, so I, I've got all kinds of things going on in my head that uh, I drive my wife crazy with. Because <laughs> every time I feel like every day I come home with a new idea, and a new vision, and so it's, it's really cool to see it, see this one come to real life because it just motivates me to keep going. That sounds a little bit like the Mark White Show. <laughs> I, I have <laughs> yeah. to tell my wife my my ideas for the show all the time, and I know Tom, she's <laughs> she's very appreciative of the ideas, and then sometimes it may be a little daunting. That's right. You got that right.
The two children, Levi and Nora, what are their ages? Yeah, so uh, Le- I'm sorry, Nora is, she just turned three. So uh, we wrote the story in perspective that they're a little older than their actual age. Um, a, a lot of the reason for the context of the story, but uh, Nora is, she just turned three. And then Levi, I believe, uh, is five or six. I can't remember the exact age. He's, he's about five or six. Now, I have a seven year old. She'll be eight in December. I'm having a yeah. tough time recalling as a three year old how much she knew about what was going on around her. But you can tell us how does Nora feel about this book? Oh, she was so excited. We, we got our first copy uh, in a couple weeks ago and uh, we read it to her and she was like, That's me. That's me. And she got so <laughs> excited. And then, uh, of course, uh, she saw Levi and, and was so excited to see Levi on the book as well. And so, uh, it's, it's a book that we've been reading uh, to her for for a couple weeks now since we had it. And it's just a cool thing uh, for her to relate to it, of course. But also, uh, you know, she's three years old. So there's obviously still a lot for her to learn. And, uh, you know, I really hope that she, she reads the story and, and knows the impact of it. And it kind of makes an impact on her as, as she continues to develop. Well, that answers that question. I'm so glad to hear that she is able to enjoy the fact that she's included in that book. I just started a segment with my own daughter called Cora's Corner on Saturdays, and she started out reading books. And so she started out with Beatrix Potter and Peter Rabbit. So we're moving through that. And I just love the fact of these young people being encouraged through reading and this yeah. particular story, what it encourages and the the meaning behind it, compassion and love and kindness is so important for these young people to have in their minds from an early age. Yeah, absolutely. We It was funny. A couple of days ago, we were, uh, I mean, you know, the, the craziness of getting ready in the morning and uh, getting the girls off to school. And um, we, she was, I was getting her shoes on and she just, uh, said the said a remark of she said, "Daddy, I just want to love people," and uh, it was just a really really cool moment. You know, it's it's uh, you know obviously as parents we're not perfect, um, but it's those moments where you're like, man, I, at least I'm doing something right. I'm I'm I'm, I'm instilling something in in her in her development to where she just wants to love people. Absolutely, man, that is cr- that is incredible. If we could yeah. take that attitude and that perspective as adults the world would change very quickly. And I know that you're not kidding. We have more to talk about with this new book. I love you more than me. And let's go into another segment. We're going to take a quick break, Clayton, but when we come back, let's talk more about this book, how people can connect with you, how they can get the book. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, folks, right now we're talking to Clayton Martin in Birmingham, Alabama. He is the author of, I love you more than me. This book was written with Nora and Levi in mind as he wrote the book thanks to a dream. <laughs> I know I have had some of those dreams, but I didn't write the things down, so they were they've been long since forgotten. But you know what? I'm glad that Clayton had that dream and was able to put it down on paper and to put this book out. I love you more than me. And I hope that you'll stick with us as we continue this conversation. You are listening to the Mark White Show and I am your host, Mark White. A pat on the back, a big old hug, a little laugh. We can make a difference. All we have to do is try. Every day's a chance to change somebody else's life. Let's all do something good today. Mr. Cecil Batchelor is the one that started this business as Dependable Service Center. And even though now it's Green's Dependable Hardware and we're a true value store, our tagline is still your Dependable Service Center. We've tried to keep that alive for all these years. Mr. Batchelor really started a good business. We're really excited to be carrying on a long-standing tradition. It's the oldest retail store in the city of Russell. We're Green's Dependable Hardware, 15220A Highway 43 in Russellville. Alabama. We're right behind McDonald's or right across the street from the hospital. Number is 256-331-0123. The Dependable Service Center. 
Located in Tuscumbia, Alabama, the Alabama Music Hall of Fame honors Alabama's music achievers. You can even go into the recording studio and try out your talents as a singer. That's the Alabama Music Hall of Fame located at 617 Highway 72 West in Tuscumbia, Alabama. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Give them a call at 256-381-4417. Check them out on the web at alamhof.org. Thompson Roofing and Construction is a locally owned family business serving the North Alabama and Southern Tennessee area. They are a Better Business Bureau A-plus member since 2011 and a GAF Master Elite Contractor. Give them a call at 256-952-3309 or check them out on the web at 256roofing.com. They offer free inspections. Thompson Roofing and Construction. Is it time for a haircut? Go see my friends Philip Butler and B.H. Parker at Southwind Barbershop, located at 1637 Lee Street in Rogersville, Alabama. Give them a call at 256-247-5658. That's 256-247-5658. Experience the difference at Athens Bible School. The vision and purpose is to provide each student a quality education in a Christ-centered environment to develop the whole person spiritually, mentally, physically, and socially in safe at supportive surroundings. The Saul Biblical Foundation permeates learning and culture in the classrooms and every extracurricular activity. This is John by John Ricky Stock. I love the Mark White Show. Trust your mind. Drives into the city, works extra hard all day, finishes a burn. Welcome back to the Mark White Show. Glad you could join us today as I talk to Clayton Martin in Birmingham, Alabama, actually Springville, Alabama, and he is an author, first-time author of the book, I Love You More Than Me, and this is a book that was inspired through a dream that he had. He mentioned that in the first segment, and we're talking about his daughter, Nora, and her friend, Levi, and the great friendship that they have. I think it's a wonderful story to share because if we look in the child's perspective and what Nora said in the first segment, her dad said she said was, I just want to love people. And if we can think about our world in that way, then we can be better people for it. Welcome back to the Mark White Show, Clayton Martin. Thank you so much, man. It's an honor to be here. This book has yet to be released and that is exactly why you're on the show right now is so that people can start thinking about making their purchase of I love you more than me and letting this song have an impact on their life yeah absolutely it, it, the book actually officially releases on uh, October 6th um, so really excited about that day obviously we're, we're working with uh, several different organizations and uh, people like yourself uh, of getting the message of the story out, and uh, you know, our goal ultimately when we when we sat down to to actually complete this project was, uh, you know, my goal is not to make a ton of money on it. Uh, you know, if if it happens, it happens. But uh, man, my goal is man, I just want to spread kindness and compassion in a world that needs it, because uh, we all know uh, we live in a crazy world um, that uh, needs a lot of love and kindness and compassion. And so, uh, if that's what this book does, then I'm I'm grateful for it. One of the things you mentioned was organizations and through the Mark White show, I have recognized so many nonprofits that have been established for the special needs community. And yeah. there are so many opportunities out there for a story like this. And it could be in the down syndrome community. It could be in the autism community. There's so many different places where this book fits so well as we yeah. talk about not only awareness, but acceptance and inclusion. Yeah, absolutely. And, you, and you're spot on. We're, we're working with a number of organizations to, to get the book out. Um, and you mentioned earlier in the first segment, Stephanie Langford, which you had on the show, I think last week, she is, uh, she's actually a friend of ours. And so we, we've been uh, talking about uh, some different outlets to push the book through. And, you know, I know her son, Zach is, is uh, he, he's a boy with Down syndrome as well. So she, obviously has a natural heart for, for the message of the book. And, 
so it's really cool to, to see all these people come together and uh, really unite around the message of, of the story. It has blown my mind over the past week as I simply reached out to Ronald McDonald House Charities of Alabama to talk about their day of giving and then to yeah. have Stephanie talk about Zach and then to lead to Hunter Norwood. And then the very next day I was talking to Sacred Selections of Birmingham and I was talking to Emily yeah. Atherton and she mentioned her sister who had Down syndrome. And one thing has led to another and here I am talking to you today today it's almost like someone's telling me something when it comes to the special needs community and, and just to make sure that I'm using the Mark White show as a vehicle and a tool to help these folks. That's awesome, man. And I, I appreciate your voice and, and your platform to, to use that because, um, you know, I think I read on your Facebook profile, it's something like a show that unites us. That is exactly what we need. We need a show that unites people instead of divides people. So I, I appreciate what you do, man. Well, you know, Clayton, as we look at the world around us, there's a couple of different ways that we can look at it. I decided when my dad died at 58 years old of cancer that I would look for the difference makers and I would try to find those people who are an encouragement and inspiration to us all and share those stories yeah. and just, just become a mode of transportation to help get that good word out so that we all could find ways when we're down, when we're not feeling our best, that we look over and we say, look, you know, there's Clayton, and he has written a book, and he's trying to share a special relationship between his daughter and her friend in a book called I Love You More Than Me. Well, what can I do? What can I do to make a difference? And it may be supporting the book. It may be going out and buying the book for somebody to encourage yeah. them, but we just have to find the difference makers in our communities. There are difference makers out there. Oh, you're, you're spot on. And, and I think, you know, difference maker can, can be a number of things. Um, anybody can be a difference maker, right? I mean, it, you don't have to have a, a social platform to be able yes. to make a difference. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a simple smile or it's a simple word of encouragement to somebody. I mean, it, you never know uh, the difference you can make in somebody's life by just being kind. I mean, it, it's, it's a it's a lost factor that we've we've lost in this crazy world of I man just the simpleness of being kind is is a is a difference maker and so uh, you know if you're listening out there but so the way to be a difference maker is just to be kind love people and and know that you know you never know what somebody's walking through so they might just need a smile or they might just need a high five or maybe even a hug and I know living in the COVID world hugs are <laughs> sometimes frowned upon but uh, you know so, sometimes people just need a hug and so. Uh, I, I completely agree with you, Mark. I mean, it, being a difference maker obviously is is a uh, is a great thing, but but there's there's a lot of things that we can do to make a small difference. But a small difference is still a difference. And look at it this way, Clayton. We're talking about your daughter Nora, as you mentioned, is three years old, and then Levi, who would be pre-K, kindergarten age, and I'm 42 years old. I don't know how old you are, but we're talking. People who are listening right now are much older than much older than three and five and six years old, and so yeah. the impact that a three year old and a five and six year old can have on people because of their friendship, because of their relationship, it should have an impact on us as we hear a story like this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's there's a number of kids, uh, you know, picture books out there that there's there's a a very good message for all of us to learn. And so obviously I've got a, I've got a heart for kids. I've got a, uh, obviously two, two young daughters. And, and so, uh, that's really one of the reasons I wanted to do a kid's book. Um, but also, uh, man, there's just a lot of life when you see an illustrated kid's book, uh, paint such a beautiful message. So Clayton, each one of us has someone who made a difference in our lives and impact in our life. Who is it that influenced you early on to have the heart that you do, buddy? Yeah. So, uh, one of my good friends growing up in, in school, uh, his name was Jamal. Um, he is, um, he was a guy with, he's a kid with special needs, autistic. Um, but literally from first grade, uh, the teacher partnered me with him, uh, because we just got along and we were just friends and he was, um, if, if you're familiar with, with people with autism, a lot of times they, they need something that's just comforting to them, right? Or, or else that things can kind of go array. 
Um, and so Jamal got partnered with me and we were literally friends all the way through high school. Um, and it was just a, it was just a cool friendship that, that was developed and made such an impact on my life. Uh, and so I was able in high school, uh, to be a part of the best buddies program at our, at, at my high school. And so I was able to be partnered with a couple more people with special needs and, uh, really just develop friendships with them. And then in high, in college, I was able to, uh, volunteer a little bit with, uh, special needs athletics, um, which is a, a local organization where we went to college. And, uh, from there, uh, man, it's, it's just cool to see the people that, uh, you know, I've been brought into my life, uh, that, that have made such an impact on me. Now I'll tell you, Clayton, when you're sharing this with me and I think about your high school days and being friends with Jamal, I, this is a great story for your high school to know that there's an up and coming author and to know that there was that impact through your school. Where did you go? Uh, I went to Centennial High School. It's in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, that's, where, that's where I grew up it's in Franklin. It's just about 20 minutes south of Nashville. Um, and so I uh, w- went there and um, where I met Jamal was a school called Poplar Grove. Uh, that's where I went um, first grade through eighth grade. So I went to school. So that's where I met Jamal. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in the process right now of reaching out to some people back home and, and to see how we can, can spread that as well. I've actually, the special needs teacher, uh, she, she just retired from the Williamson County school system, but the special needs teacher of uh, Centennial who made an impact on my life, uh, she messaged me and I'm going to send her an autographed copy of the book uh, to her house, which I'm, I'm really excited about. She was, she was super proud of the book. I love that. And people love to know the impact that they had on another person's life. And sometimes that can be forgotten. You know, when we get far along in our life, we get our family and we have our careers and things of that nature. But always going back to the people who made a difference in our life, I think it makes a huge difference. And it may be the one thing that that person needs to hear today if they helped us or influenced in in a special way. Absolutely. That's one thing that I've always done in my life is, you know, I have a, I have a notebook of people that are have influenced my life in a way that um, I can't even put into words, and I always make sure that um, you know I maintain that relationship, and not out of a, not out of a transactional way, but just because um, when I get a little bit older, I, I want to be somebody like that in in someone's life, and so uh, I'm always grateful for those relationships. So Clayton, I want people to know how to connect with you. I want them to know how to be able to purchase. I love you more than me. Let yeah. this book have an impact on their life. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, we have a website. It's uh, www.claytonmartin.com, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N-M-A-R-T-I-N.com. Uh, and so that's the, that's the homepage of the book. But also uh, you can go to Amazon and just search I love you more than me. Um, and I think it's the second option uh, on there. Uh, so it's, that's where a majority of the people are buying it is, is through Amazon. That's incredible. Well, Clayton, again, people need to go to ClaytonMartin.com, find out more information about you and your inspiration for this book. And I'm so glad that you could join me today here on the Mark White Show to share about I love you more than me. And I just wish you all the best. And I wish Levi and Nora and your family and all those who will be affected by this book in a positive way, all the best moving forward. Appreciate it, man. It's such such an honor. And again, thank you for all that you do in, in the local communities and spread a message that unites us. And I appreciate your time today, man. Well, you stay connected with me. Anything I can do to help you, you let me know, Clayton, and I'll try to do the very best I can. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, sir. All right, folks here on the Mark White show, we're recognizing difference makers like Nora and Levi and sharing their stories to encourage and inspire. If you're encouraged by this show today, I hope that you'll share it with your family, your friends, your neighbors. Of course, you can follow the Mark White show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and subscribe to the Mark White show podcast via Apple iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, audio boom, SoundCloud, Blueberry, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You have been listening to another edition of the Mark White show. And this is Mark White encouraging you to find your purpose by making a difference in someone's life today. Who live and love in my hometown. Ah, these are my kind of people. Boutique Air in Muscle Shoals, Alabama offers direct flights to Atlanta and Pensacola. 
Boutique Air Service runs twice daily, seven days a week, with fares starting at $59. Follow Boutique Air Muscle Shoals on Facebook at Boutique Air MSL and book your flight through BoutiqueAir.com. Boutique Air. Where you can fly private for the cost of commercial. Howdy, y'all. This is Wiggles with Wiggles World in Texas. And I just wanted to remind y'all, no matter what age you are, you can always make a difference. A little smile can brighten up anybody's day no matter what. You're listening to The Mark White Show. Don't just throw a tailgate. Own the tailgate with a Bojangles Big Bow Box. Because only Bojangles puts tailgate-ready fresh, never frozen, honey barbecue or buffalo bone-in wings with fall-off-the-bone juiciness right in the pocket. The only way to make these wings any better? With some made-from-scratch buttery biscuits, flavorful fixins, and freshly steeped legendary iced tea. So let the quarterback do the throwing, you do the winning. Because how can you expect to win the game if you don't win the tailgate? Bojangles, it's bow time. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. Losing a loved one is hard, but losing a loved one and not having an estate plan is even harder. Attorney Harlan Mitchell witnessed what not having an estate plan can do to families and decided to use his experience to do something about it. I encourage you to go to BamaEstatePlanning.com or give Harlan Mitchell a call at 256-216-9884. Again, that website is BamaEstatePlanning.com. Let Harlan Mitchell help you with estate planning. Do it for those you love and do it today. With a house surrounded by pine trees planted in 1961, April and I knew it was time to do something about it. So we called James Paul. With over 25 years in the business, James Paul Tree Service offers their knowledge and experience along with honesty and dependability, which gives you peace of mind when it comes to tree removal, tree cleanup, and clearing. Give James Paul a call at 256-777-0711. Before they fall, give James Paul a call. You hear me, people, when I say, well, let's all do something good. 